Have you ever lost an argument and wished you were smarter? What if the key to success isn't just being smarter, but being better at changing your mind? This video reveals that improving judgment and winning arguments comes from the ability to rethink, rather than just thinking better. Whether it's tackling racism, convincing anti-vaxxers, or enhancing teamwork, progress happens when certainty takes a backseat. Success in the long run In 2009, BlackBerry dominated the smartphone market with 50% market share. But the founder was reluctant to innovate that in just five years, the market share plummeted to 1%. Okay, now before you start passing judgment on him, consider that you might have made the same mistake. As admirable as it is, staying true to your beliefs in today's world may not be enough in today's fast-changing world. The key is to know how to rethink and integrate new information into your strategies. To tackle this challenge, embracing a scientific mindset can be a game-changer. Think of scientists. They're always curious, adjusting their views based on new info, and they kick off with questions rather than firm answers. For business leaders, treating your strategy like a testable theory can be a winning move. A study on Italian startups found that those who approached their businesses scientifically ended up with more cash and customers. The big lesson here is that thinking like a scientist lets you adapt, pivot, and tweak strategies as needed, leading to success in the long run. Our biggest blind spots. Interestingly, research shows that people who aren't great at certain skills often think they're doing much better than they actually are. Like how people who struggle with logical reasoning or humor often have an overly positive view of their abilities in these areas. Or those who falsely believe they excel in a particular skill are less inclined to improve. In fact, believe it or not, these types of people have the lowest emotional intelligence. Now, don't worry, the remedy for this is humility. Embracing humility involves recognizing what you don't know being open to learning, and in the end, becoming more competent. Some worry that embracing humility might weaken self-confidence, but the truth is the two can go hand in hand. Confidence is all about believing in yourself, whereas humility revolves around questioning whether you're using the most effective methods. To uncover areas you might be overlooking, having a lively debate can be eye-opening. When we argue about what's right, it gives us the chance to rethink our ideas and stumble upon better ways of doing things. In Silicon Valley tech teams, Adam Grant found that the most successful ones had healthy debates about how to tackle tasks, especially at the beginning. They disagreed on approaches, but remained friendly. Meanwhile, the least successful teams didn't argue much about tasks, but had lots of personal conflicts. Sadly, their dislike for each other prevented constructive discussions, resulting in less than ideal outcomes. How to find a win-win solution Persuading someone isn't just about bombarding them with evidence of why they're wrong. Try seeking common ground. Why? Because skilled negotiators approach debates with a willingness to step back, giving the other person room to step forward. So in your next negotiation, consider that you don't have to win every battle. You'll be surprised to know how that can actually draw them towards your perspective. Other than that, rather than imagining debates as a balancing act, where more arguments tip the scales in your favor, the best negotiators focus on quality over quantity. They understand that too many weak arguments can dilute the stronger ones, making it easier for opponents to dismiss the entire case. Unlike average negotiators who either preach or prosecute, skilled negotiators embrace a scientific approach so instead of just pushing their own viewpoints or attacking the other side, they bring a scientist's curiosity to the table and ask questions like, can you see any truth in my proposal? Double the rate of your everyday negotiator. Power of rethinking. Adam Grant happened to spot an interesting trend while delving into the rivalry between Yankees and Red Sox baseball fans. Both camps viewed each other negatively, thinking the other was obnoxious and arrogant. To bridge this gap, Grant challenged fans to think about the randomness of their dislike for the opposing team. He asked Yankees fans to imagine being Red Sox supporters if born into a different family. After putting these thoughts into personal essays, many fans on both sides had a change of heart, realizing that their prejudices were unfounded and mistaken. To 
put it simply, when you want someone to reconsider their biases, it's not just about proving them wrong. It can be more effective to highlight the arbitrary nature of their beliefs, showing that chance plays a big role in shaping those ideas. The Art of Inquiry Odd as it may seem, sometimes the best way to encourage people to reconsider their views is through interviews. In a Quebec hospital back in 2018, a mom named Marie Helnay strongly opposed vaccinating her premature baby Toby due to her anti-vax stance. At that point, the hospital turned to Dr. Arnaud Gagnier, who used a technique called motivational interviewing. In this, he asked open-ended questions, discussed concerns, and practiced reflective listening. Stressing her freedom to decide, Gagnier acknowledged that people resist rethinking to protect their autonomy. Surprisingly, after the interview, Marie Helnay opted to vaccinate Toby and her other children without the usual persuasion tactics. This approach shows the power of letting individuals find their own reasons for change. Fresh Eyes and Open Minds In 2006, Al Gore's game-changing documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, sparked action against climate change. Fast forward 15 years and the impact on how Americans see climate change isn't as widespread as hoped. By 2018, only 59% thought climate change was a big deal, and 16% shrugged it off entirely. The mixed success makes us wonder how to better encourage people to rethink their views. One important lesson is that activists, like Gore, often simplify the climate debate into two opposing sides, expecting everyone to pick one. Rather than presenting the climate change debate as a clear-cut battle between scientists and so-called climate deniers, a better way to encourage people to reconsider is to avoid the trap of binary bias. This bias oversimplifies a complex range of opinions into just two opposing sides, all in the name of seeking simplicity. Most Americans aren't firmly on one side when it comes to climate change. Some are a bit concerned, some aren't really bothered, and some are skeptical. Insisting on this truth-tellers versus deniers idea makes people feel they have to pick a side, making it harder to rethink. Research says people change their minds more when things are seen as complex with different views. Instead of saying someone is right or wrong, it's better to show lots of opinions. This way we focus on actual issues instead of emotionally charged choices. And hey, don't stress about seeming weak. It actually makes you come across as more convincing, not less. Culture is what motivates and retains talented employees. Rethinking isn't just an individual affair, it's a collective necessity for organizations too. Let's look at NASA's Columbia Space Shuttle incident in 2003 as a case in point. When foam broke off during takeoff, the ground team didn't think much of it, considering it a minor hiccup. Little did they know how crucial that foam was, and it tragically led to the shuttle breaking up during re-entry, resulting in the loss of all seven astronauts. Back then, NASA was all about performance, aiming for top-notch results every time. Unfortunately, this intense focus on outcomes left little space for the essential practice of rethinking. So to make your team better at reconsidering decisions, you need to turn your workplace into somewhere where they are not sure of themselves, but they love to learn. They're more creative and make fewer mistakes. That's where the real magic happens. Now to set up this learning vibe, you've got to make your team feel safe a place where they can take risks without worrying about getting in trouble. And when this happens, they're more likely to admit when they mess up. Now you know. To help your team get good at rethinking, forget the idea that messing up is a big no-no. Instead, think of it like this. Making mistakes and going back to try new things isn't just okay. It's super important for always learning, growing, and keeping your organization successful.